All right, so we're at Denny's. We're chilling. We sitting down, mm -hmm. and we just talking. That's what we. That's what we're doing right now. We're virtually eating right now. That's what we're doing. Oh, that's okay. that's that's what we're doing. Okay. Virtual, virtually eating. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing tonight? Gotta make sure I bring this back. Yes, sir. Well, welcome back to the Lockout Man podcast show. Show that just don't never stops. You know what I'm saying? I am your humble host, Lockout Man. What's up? There you go. Okay, enough of all that. But <laughs> I am here tonight. Welcome, welcome, guys. If you guys like content like this and more, man, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? That all button lets YouTube know that you're fucking with me. It also lets YouTube know that you want all of the content when it comes. So when I go live, you'll get it. And when I drop videos, you get it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yo, if you like to support the channel, you can do that by way of hooking a brother up with some coffee, man. Or hook me up with some tea. I'm almost done with this. I need some more. So if you want to hook me up, man, the Cash App and the Coffee App is in the description below. Well, today's podcast is another interview for you guys. Yes, sir. Now, ever since Queen Trucking, you guys know Queen Trucking. Ever since Queen Trucking teamed with this young lady over at over at her previous job, because I'm not sure if she wants me to specify where she worked at. So over at Queen Trucking previous job, at the at the tail end of her, of her journey there, she went team with this fine young lady. All right. I'm saying fine. Kind of. Kind of had my head scratching there for a minute, like, damn, didn't realize she was that fine. But anyway, but yeah, I reached out to her. I told Queen Trucking, I said, yo, let her know that I want to get her on to the podcast. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But, you know, we went through some, we went through some back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, and now she is finally here. Welcome tonight to the show. You love India. What's going on there? Hey. <laughs> How are you? Now you said you you said you're driving right now, right? Uh yeah, I just parked. Oh, okay, okay. Where 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 are you at in the part of the world? Uh I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you love India. Let let the people know who you are and where you come from. Uh, well, you guys, I'm India, and I'm from Miami, Florida. And this is um, my first year out here in trucking, so I'm definitely a rookie. <laughs> All right, so you so you've been out here. So this this is your first year, and um, yeah, what's 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 the experience like for you so far? Uh, I actually like it. Um, just going to different states and seeing different things. Uh, this show's kind of rough because of COVID. So a lot of stuff that I wanted to see and do, like a lot of things were closed. So 
um, kind of spoiled some of that. But other than that, I actually like it out here. All right. So when you came into the before you came into the game, what what, what you was doing before you got in in the trucking? <laughs> Oh, man, before I got into trucking, I used to be a stripper, a dancer. Um, yeah, so that was what I used to do uh, for about 10, 11 years. Okay, 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 okay. So, <laughs> so you you said you 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 said you was from you you from Miami, Florida, right? So that's where. That's where you got. That's yeah. where you got the strip game from down there. Yeah. <laughs> so you you say you was doing it for eleven years. So you why you stopped? Well, <laughs> uh, the reason I stopped is because the game had done got like a little watered down. It was starting to slow up and stuff, and then. Um, me being in that industry, I ended up meeting a guy, and I got arrested and stuff, and I had a whole a whole thing going on, and I knew I didn't want to keep on dancing, so by me having a record and stuff, I ended up getting into trucking, because I knew that that was something else that I could do, outside of just being a stripper forever. I mean, I knew that's something that I can't do forever. Now, being in the strip game, how, how old was you when, you when you got into the strip game? Uh, like 19. So let me ask you this. We all seen the movie Players Club. We all seen, <laughs> we, we all seen how was the life like uh, via the movie. Does the movie portray the strip game in reality? Do the reality, is it reality hits like the movies or no? Yes, it is. <laughs> it actually is. Exactly what you see in that movie is exactly what goes on behind those doors in those dressing rooms and that club in the locker room. Like that is exactly how it is. So I used now, believe it or not, y'all, believe it or not, I used to I used to be a DJ. Yes. I used to be a DJ. And I <laughs> DJ I, I DJ this uh, this strip club called Lim Rocks over in Cleveland, Ohio, over there off of Miles Avenue. So if any of you old school guys in here that's that stayed in the Cleveland area and y'all know that little that little area right there between uh between 131st and Harvard lies that little strip club right there called Limrots. And um yeah, we it was pretty deep. I mean, before you know, before stuff started decided to change, you know, the the owner of the club, you know, was just letting it all letting it all hang out at one point. You know what I'm saying? But then the cops started raiding them and then he had to change up and then the females couldn't come up out their clothes like they want to. They couldn't get fully naked because he served liquor. Then he had to turn around and he started letting the guys bring their own beverages and then the ladies got got naked that way but then it's it, it it just got crazy and then unfortunately the fun came to an end and it just boom. so <laughs> so down in florida was it did you did you did you get all so i uh, let me make sure i get my mind right did you like <laughs> like when you got into the game and you started making money what was some of the what was some of the days that you would make the most money and what would a female had to do in order to get that much money oh wow <laughs> um the best money was always made on the weekends that's when everybody's out and clubbing and stuff and Miami is a party city so the city never sleeps. Like it's, we party all the way to six, seven o'clock in the morning is when the club closes. And when it's big events like Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend, some of the clubs do stay open twenty four hours. So 
you dancing from sun up to sundown. So um, big events is when you really would make the most money. Memorial weekend is kind of like the stripper holiday. That's when you make the most money. Mm-hmm. Um, that and tax season is when it's really um, big in the strip clubs and stuff. Tax season? Um, in Miami, you do have to get naked. Tax season? Yes, people like to come in there and spend their... Uh, <laughs> Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, people like to come in there and spend their tax money. Uh. <laughs> you just got your tax money, bro. What you? What the, what the fuck, man? I mean, when, when tax season exactly. for me... come handy here. The tax season for me is like when I get my money from tax season, I want to save that for as long as I can. And going to the strip club is not part of it. Wow. Tax season, huh? <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. Was some of the clubs, some? did you just, was you exclusive to one club or you, you jumped from club to club? Oh, no, I was exclusive. Did they now? Did they? Did they give you any? Was there any fear of anything uh, that you probably encountered while you was while you was in the game for so long? Any fear? Yeah. Like, what was? Did Did you have? Um, the only fear I ever feared was getting robbed or something like like that but the club that I worked at it was no private room so that was like a plus to me it ain't no taking you back there and doing nothing outside of dancing like whatever we can't do in front of the crowd ain't gonna get done okay okay so it wasn't it wasn't like you know <laughs> no it wasn't no no private room ain't no boom boom room okay. <laughs> ain't no nothing <laughs> yeah the boom boom room you know what I'm saying that's what's up, you know. You take me, take me back there for nice. for some extra extra service. Now the strip game, it comes with extra service, but you didn't partake partake in any of that. Was or was you even was you coerced to get into, you know, doing something more than than what you wanted to do? Oh no. No, but it did happen around me. Like I was definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely not your average stripper or your average dancer. Like I'm big on self respect. I'm already out here, you know, getting naked and showing my body off. So that was like, that's the most you gonna get out of me. We not gonna be doing nothing in the club. You ain't gonna be pulling your little thing out, and I'm not gonna be dancing on you for happy hour at night. No, nah, we not doing that. And I'm not leaving with you out to no club. If you spend your money, you better enjoy the fantasy and go home to your wife. So India, what you you said you 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 said you met a guy in the in the uh in the uh in the club, but how how can you handle a relationship being the stripper with a guy that you prob that you oh, that, that you tough. yeah take take me through that. Because I I, I always good. wanted I always wanted <laughs> that was to know really tough. because you got you know not where did you did you meet the guy in the club or did you meet him outside of the club? No, I met him in the club and that came with a whole bunch of insecurities. Like he was very insecure, like, and then it came with abuse. It came with like that just came with a whole lot of like uh, just too much. Take us, take, take so it, us. It was not easy, they in, and, and not at all. It was the abuse, it was the accusations of doing this, or this person like you, or he coming in there while I'm working, and it's like, oh, I see you dancing up on this person, you was too close, or you sitting on this person's lap, and it's like, okay, that's a part of my job, like, to uh, get the money out of somebody, like, I'm not. Whatever I'm doing out here, you can see it. So it's not like I'm hiding anything from you or anything like that. So how did um, how, that's something that I don't think I would ever do again? Is how how did the meetup happen between between you and him? Like, I mean, was he a was he like a regular before? Uh, he was a regular, like um, <laughs> yeah, he was a regular in Miami. They have regular customers that come in there all the time that spend money 
and you know they they there so much that the DJs know them. They call them out. Like everybody know who they are. Security know who they are. So they kind of get treated a little special from you know other customers that just come in every blue moon or something like that. So um, initially when he was trying to date me, I was like, no, like I'm okay at the time. Like I'm young. I was definitely in college at the time, and my mind wasn't really on that. But then he started coming in there and throwing the money. And it's like, okay, this person spent a lot of money. Then we started going on dates. And then things just went from there. All right. So I came into Shape World's uh, uh, Instagram Live when she was talking to you. And you mentioned that for such a, for such a fine-ass female, you got hemmed up. What the hell happened? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, he was down the streets doing his thing or whatever, and I got caught up um, doing um, some fraud and stuff. And I ended up um, getting caught, and I didn't tell on him anything. And I ended up taking a rap, and I got convicted. I went to prison, feds, and I served my federal sentence. And I did my probation and everything. And when I got out, I got I went back to the game back to dancing because I mean that's all I knew and at the time I was in school so I was about to um intern and like that was taken away from me so it's like I can't go back to school whatever you know future I did have planned as far as that is gone so all right so India all I know I, is I gotta so I gotta I, I gotta know you 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 know you didn't do you didn't um you didn't snitch what happened to the what happened to your boyfriend? Did no, he, I didn't. Did did he go to jail or you was it all fell on you? No, no, I took the rap. Yeah, it all fell on me. He didn't go to jail or anything. I I took the whole rap. Fuck. Did he? Did he? What was the aftermath of of you and him after you? Did he come see you while you was in jail? Did he kept in contact? Did he fucking say thank you? Like, thank you. Um, actually, uh, uh, we actually was, um, he actually kept in contact, but I felt like he only kept, kept in contact with me to make sure that he I didn't go talking. back after the fact until, like, after the case was over. Yeah, I, I felt like he wanted to make sure that I didn't go back, you know, and reopen the case or go and tell after the fact once everything was done. So I felt like he kept in contact for that reason. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what I did was really out of fear. So it's like I was scared of him because I was being abused, and I was in an abusive relationship for eight years. So um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm big on loyalty, so I knew what I was out there doing. If you did the crime, do the time, even though it wasn't my stuff, but I was was to do it so I took the route like yeah, he'll get his karma however he get it like I just I don't talk to him we don't see it's nothing like that I have seen him in passing um, after the situation and he's tried to speak to me and stuff but like it's it's the rap I don't got like I, I don't respect nobody that first off put me in that type of situation because right. if you I mean you I'm supposed to be your girl and if you're supposed to love me that much you shouldn't even have your girl in that type of you know atmosphere or doing any of that especially if I'm in school trying to better myself like I shouldn't even been introduced to any of that or even knew what you had going on or had any been put in right. your game room at all right right so like exactly. my dad my dad you know my dad used to sell drugs and my mom didn't know nothing about what he did what his stash said she knew nothing about nothing so therefore when them people come and grab her grab him and asking her questions she don't know nothing she can't tell right him. and right. that's how i feel like it was supposed to be but i mean everybody everybody don't keep it g everybody ain't loyal you everybody nah, don't they don't keep it to the street code so i mean it is what it is so you you did five years federal um how how was the how how was the time uh how was the time in in federal prison uh treat you Oh, actually, the time in federal prison was not bad at all. When I first got in, I was scared because, like, I had never been to jail before. And I'm like, it's not really my thing. It's not like I'm one of them girls that's out here living this life and I'm, like, I'm about that life or nothing like that. Like, I'm going to defend myself, but that wasn't, uh, you know, that wasn't my thing at all. So 
I was scared. And then by me seeing stuff on TV, you thinking that right. prison is like, oh, my God, these girls right. going to beat me up when right. they jump on me. And it was nothing like that. Okay. It was nothing like that at all. Like, it's to the point where if somebody tried me, I'm like, listen, I'm I'm, I'm willing to go back and I'm going to see here to them crackers come and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sit here and answer questions and y'all just going to have to book me and I'm going to smile in my mug shot because I already know what it's like in there, so I'm not scared to go back. Okay. If I gotta put, if I get put in a situation where I have to, so it, it's to that point. Like I'm not like, oh my god, I don't want to go back there. Like it wasn't bad at all. It was like an all girls school. So um, I met a lot of other inmates in there that was in there. But it wasn't. It 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 wasn't. It wasn't portrayed like how the movies portray women's prison. No, not at all. So it wasn't no female no, coming. Wasn't no not female coming up on you and looking at you like a snack and like, yo, I, I need to make you my B. That it was none of that going on. Nah, it was girls. Nah, it was girls that was like trying to talk to me and stuff like that. But nobody ever came and like, oh yeah, you my girl. Oh you, oh you can't put in my room or trying to not nah, take my snacks or nothing like no. It was nothing like that. But then again, it could have been because I was at a camp because in the federal system, depending on what type of charges you get, they put you in certain types of um, institutions. You got camps, you got medium, and then you got the actual prison. So because my charges was fraud and it was like, um, it wasn't no harmful um, type of um, charges, I ended up doing my time at a camp. Okay, okay, okay. So, but let, so... I, I watch, I, I guess I watch too much TV. <laughs> I guess I watch too much TV because, <laughs> like, when a fine female goes up in there and she's doing the bid, like, you know, maybe like 10, 15, 20 years, she's going to have to forget everything that's outside. And, and is it true that she's going to have to become, mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to say the word, but is it true that she's going to have to become a Oh, okay. That is not true. I mean, that's up to your own discretion. If you can't control yourself and you can't go in the, on your bunk and play with yourself and get off until you get back out here, then that's at your own discretion. Oh, okay. Now, if you want to go and you and you you want to go down that lane, then that's on you. But I mean, okay. it was stuff like that going on, and you did have couples, you did have people that was in rooms together. It was known that that's my girl, and like the stuff that stuff was going on. In there, so. Okay. But okay. you wasn't forced to it. But I mean, that's just like a guy. It's up to your, you know, your willpower. If you gonna go in there and stay a man and do your, t- your time and serve your five, ten years, or you gonna go in there and get bitched up and let somebody play with you. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, India. So after you got out, you say you went right back into the game because you know I, I guess it is kind of hard for, you know, for for convicts as a matter of fact I, I got a great interview that's coming up tomorrow with my man Sharif and you know and his um his uh bid but coming back out I know it's hard for you guys to get back in the way of life but unfortunately you know with all the closed doors that was in front of you you migrated back into back into stripping what what uh what was the interest in trust where where did the interest in trust came because your boyfriend wasn't a trucker you ain't had no by the looks of it you ain't had no uh, you haven't been around no truck drivers or anything like that where where the interest in trust come from <laughs> Uh, the interest of trucks came from when it was like a slow season in the club, and I'm like, oh my god, like you know, I still got bills, I got stuff I got to pay. I'm getting older, and then um, I had saw two um of my face, two of my Instagram friends, they also were convicted felons, and they had took a class and they had got um their license and. Like right after they posted their certificate and got their license and stuff, like two weeks later they got hired. And, like, I was so amazed, like, damn, like, you get hired that fast. Like, they really letting you, you know, get out here and work that fast. And from then, like, I just started doing research and stuff on it. And I started, you know, um, putting hashtags hashtags on Instagram, trying to look for female truckers and ask questions and stuff. And then I reached out to a couple of truckers and stuff. 
and, you know, was asking questions and um, everybody came and they, they pretty much helped me. Whatever questions I had, they answered them. And, you know, by the grace of God, I got my license and I'm out here. Where did you go to get your license? Um, I went to Miami Lakes Tech in Miami, Florida, and I noticed when I got out here in trucking that it's totally different. I don't know in other states, but in Miami, um, they do have programs for convicted felons to get their license for free. All right, so that's how that's how you. So I mean, if you so you didn't Miami come out. And, you didn't come out of the pocket of of getting your license. You you went through a program. Well, actually, I did. I oh, okay. did. No, I came out of the pocket. No, I, I came out of my pocket, but I didn't know until I got in the class and I'm realizing that almost my whole class is convicted felons and they all coming from this program. So I didn't know until after the fact. And then that's when they was telling me, like, yeah, they didn't pay nothing for their license. But in total, my license, I paid $1,800. That's how much it is. But the, the course is three months. Okay. Well, you know, it's better to it, it's better to pay for your license anyway. You, you're you not con, you're not constricted or... Or uh, yeah, con- yeah. you're, you're no not contract right. You're not contracted to any companies or nothing like that. So yeah, you you did pretty you did pretty good. Yeah. You know, let let them let them other guys in there trying to figure out. You know, after a company pays and then you gotta be <laughs> obligated for that company for about a year and making x amount of cents and this that and the third. All right, so you uh yeah. what what um now you had your background. Uh, as a convicted felon, but you paid for your own license. How hard was it for you to find a good trucking job? And what was your first trucking job? Uh, it was actually hard because <laughs> I, I, I had three strikes against me. My first strike is I'm a new driver. I don't got no experience. Exactly. Second strike is I'm from Florida. It's hard for you to get, you know, jobs out of Florida. They always complain about they can't get you home. You know, it ain't no freight there and stuff like that. And then my third strike was me being a convicted felon. So I started applying in that night transportation, covenant, and then everybody taking me through safety and stuff. And they're like, oh, well, you know, our guidelines is you got to be out for at least seven years. So you got two more years to go. or well, you got three more years to go. Or, you know, you haven't met the requirements for the time to be out with a felon or something like that. So I'm like, oh, my God, I got distracted, was getting, like, nervous. And I'm like, well, how do these boys got these jobs? And, you know, I know they convicted felons, but I don't know how long they've been out since their, um, um, their sentence and stuff or since they served their time. So um, I was on Facebook, and Facebook has, like, a bunch of trucking groups and stuff. And I saw where somebody was saying that um, Navajo was hiring. Mm-hmm. And I went on here and I applied, and they brought me on right away. And at first, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, "Are you sure?" Because I don't apply at all these other companies, and everybody told me no. Like, or they like, well, "You gotta wait to hear back from safety," and they never called back. So for them to tell me yes right away, they was like, "We can have you here in for orientation this Monday." Like, I was excited because I'm like, "Well, let me go ahead and start my career." I didn't want to sit and have my license for another three, four, five months and never use them because I'm sitting here trying to wait for the right job or I'm trying to go with a certain type of company. So I'm like, well, let me just go ahead and wet my feet out there and get out there and start getting my experience in. So now when I've, Navajo, you know. Now, obviously, on, now obviously Navajo, now, now, now Navajo, is, that's, is that where you at right now? Yes, that is. All right, so Navajo. So Navajo brought you in. They trained you. Uh, I'm assuming the training, the the training period, the training time there was was good, right? Mm-hmm. So, did you train with a female or did you train with a male? I had a male. I had two trainers. As a matter of fact, <laughs> my first trainer. I actually had to get off his truck because he was very, very, very rude. And I was like, let me get the hell off his truck before we get into it or before I have to make a call and have somebody pull up. So <laughs> I had to get off his truck. And um, <laughs> I ended up sitting even longer for training because training is actually for a week for new students that have not been out on the road at all. And I ended up being out and training for two months because I had to sit at the hotel for another two weeks until I was able to get another trainer. So that so you still got that pull up game is strong, huh? 
<laughs> I mean, I'm from Miami. Like, please don't let the face or the body fool you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that pull-up game is strong. All right, so over at so it what so what, what are what what are what what's your experience with Navajo? Like, what what do you do? You solo driver? You you're a team driver? Because again, how I met you was through Queen Trucking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm team driving. Um, with um, uh, it's a it's a refrigerated company, so I haul refills on the um team account. All right. So you you prefer teams, or you 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 run in team because you have to, or what? What's what's your preference? I run in teams because of the pay. Oh, Just okay. because of the pay. Oh, okay. Now now, Queen Trucking came into the picture. How how did y'all two? How did y'all two link up? Um, a queen. I think Queen had already applied for the job, and like most truckers, before you start a company or when you're looking for a company, you start googling companies and stuff, and you're trying to find out like about the company, like to see what people that have worked there saying about it. Is it a good company? Like, how do people like it? Their experience in. I have a YouTube channel, which is the same as my Instagram. You love India. And I'm guessing she came across one of my videos and um, she was there in orientation. One day I was at the terminal and I saw her and she was like, hey, I, I watch you on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? And we spoke <laughs> and we exchanged numbers or whatever. Um, we didn't in team right away, but we did keep in touch. And um, she was running solo when she did finish. And then after a while, like I said, the pay is what draw you to the team and account. And when she... Um, uh, was ready to come over and she was looking for a teammate. I was solo at the time because my teammate had gotten off my truck. So I also needed a teammate anyway. So it was like perfect timing. And we ended up teaming up together and everything was smooth. All right. All right. Well, you know, uh, you, you, you know, her, her background, right? Her, her situation over at prime mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's very well documented uh -huh. across my, across my and her platform. Um, yeah, very crazy, very crazy. So y'all two, y'all two linked up, y'all team for a couple of months until she decided to uh, move on to the current company where she's at now, which leaving, which left you alone again. How hard is it to find another team? Uh, <laughs> how hard is it to find another person to team with you there? I mean, me being a female, that's. That ain't hard at all. Exactly. <laughs> of course, everybody want to get on the truck and sing with me or whatever. But, <laughs> I mean, I'm not here for that. So, I'm very particular about who I team with. And the guy that I'm with now, he's an older guy. And he's kind of like an uncle to me. Like, it's nothing sexual. It's like, it's nothing like that. So, we respect one another. And it's like, I don't have to worry about that at all. But I have dealt with that with my first two partners before I, um, linked up with Queen and she left me out here again so <laughs> I did deal with people on the truck trying to <laughs> trying to you know do more than just the work ethic so I have dealt with it India how do you describe yourself as far as as far as being the trucker like how, how somebody asked somebody asked like what you were about how would you describe yourself I mean, I'm about my money. That's 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 first. Um, I'm very outgoing. I'm out. I wouldn't say I'm outspoken because sometimes you know I let people say things and I let it go because we can't go back to where we came from. But um, I'm definitely outgoing. I think I'm very caring. I'm easy to get along with. All right, that's. I'm definitely up. a hard worker. All right. So since you've been in the since you've been in the game, have you ever been have you been discriminated against uh, since you've been a truck driver because you're a woman? No, I actually haven't. By looking at your videos, no, I wouldn't imagine. No. By looking at your videos, <laughs> I wouldn't imagine you are. You know, but you know, it's 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 kind of crazy no, out here how some men all. how some men would come after you and all like that. You know what I'm saying? 
But uh, but yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Um, so hold on, right quick, hold on, hold on. All right, so what were some of the challenges that you faced, you know, after you got out of training and you got, you know, you you started driving solo? What what were some of the challenges out there when you started last year? Driving solo? Yes. Um, well, my first challenge was the winter season because I came on at the end of September, beginning of October. So uh, it was like two months before snow started falling. And I'm from Miami, so we only get two seasons, summer and hurricane. So um, <laughs> I wasn't used to um, snow or none of that. I had never driven in snow. I have seen snow and visit, you know, other states and stuff and have came up with snow activities. But to actually be out here driving in snow, not even a regular car, to just come straight out here with a truck into this type of climate, it was definitely a challenge. Um, and also with the mountains, you know, Miami is pretty much a flat surface. We don't have all those mountains and stuff like that. So oh, okay. It was definitely a challenge my first year and coming into that season. Like, it's not like I started driving the whole summer and then I'm coming on to winter like I really came right out here during the winter so that was definitely a choppy um dealing with black ice and stuff and making sure you know I stay on the road because I am running on the west coast since you since you've been trucking for what almost a year right or over a year mm -hmm. so since you've been trucking over a year where where has some of the some of the worst places that you ever that you had to do a ten hour break at that you might have been scared of a ten hour break um and this is like when you're solo my worst place was just at a <laughs> this is like this is probably doing your solos your solos because team I'm assuming y'all y'all constantly running uh, yeah while y'all teaming. But yeah. But while you were solo, what were some yeah. of the what were some of the places out here that you that you felt that was not a good place to do a ten hour break? Um, my scariest place was up here in Flagstaff in Arizona. Um, it's a rest area that that is not really open, but mm -hmm. they do have it open and it says truckers only. And um, it's no rest area open. It's no bathrooms. They actually have porta parties out there, and it is pitch black out there. And it's you know it's deers and it's a whole lot of wildlife out there. And like I was out there by myself, and I'm like so scared because there's no guard, there's no security, it's only parking for truckers. So I was <laughs> that had to be I think my scariest ten hour break ever. Mm, okay, okay. With you being on the road uh, for over a year. What are some of the basics that, in your opinion, that every every female truck driver should have on the road with them? Uh, basics? Oh, you better have you some mace. You better have you a knife. <laughs> you better have you a fanny pack because I don't walk off my truck without my fanny pack because my mace and my knife and stuff is like my gun since I can't have one out here. So I definitely keep it on me. You just never know. People is definitely weird out here. And then, especially if you're attractive or just being a female, period. Like, people walk up on me and just ask questions or just start conversations and stuff. And they catch me off guard. And it's like, hold up now. Like, make yourself known to some, or you get hurt on, you know, you get hurt off, on, not on purpose. But, like, I don't feel like you run up on me or something. But other than that, you definitely want to keep some stuff out here to make sure you stay. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so before we get on up out of here, first thing first, I, I do appreciate you coming on and taking, you know, taking time out to chop it up with me. Thank you very much. Um, your YouTube channel. Uh, when did when did you when did you started your YouTube channel, and what persuaded you to do a YouTube channel? Uh, my YouTube channel started actually when I first came on. To, um, Navajo, but well, actually like when I first got my license is when I started my channel and the reason why I started the channel was because um, when I got my license people was asking me so many questions like how did I study for the test or where did I go get my license or like 
why, you know, what made me get into trucking. And I was just like, you know, I don't want to be rude because, you know, some people already look at me and think I'm bougie or I'm stuck up or something when I'm actually down to earth and I'm cool as hell or whatever. And I was like, I don't want to, you know, people to think that I'm ignoring them or something like that. So I'm like, well, let me just go ahead and make a video. That way when people ask me, I just send them the link. So I ain't got to be sitting here copying and pasting and forwarding a whole bunch of messages or having repetitive conversations. So that's what really made me start my channel. All right. Do you have any uh do you have any kids or anything like that? Because you know, another reason why people start YouTube no. channels, they you, <laughs> you know, know, they want to make a make an archive for their kids and stuff like that. So no kids? No, I don't have no kids, but I definitely would want my kids. No, I don't have no kids, but I definitely would want my kids to watch my journey. Okay. And see what you know what I went through. Okay. So, you know, I'm I'm going over your YouTube. Very nice YouTube, by the way. Uh, yeah, very nice YouTube. <laughs> I'm stupid. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thank you. <laughs> um, the one video right here that I caught, you said I can't take it anymore. Oh wow! What the hell happened? <laughs> Uh, that video is basically me, <laughs> me getting off the truck with my current partner that I have right now, and um, I just I just reached my limit with teaming with him, so I'm definitely getting another partner. And people that watch my channel, that interact with me, and have you know watch my journey here, going through partners, I I'm at, I'm really at the point where it's like teaming. I'm almost done with it. So I got my year in. I got my experience. I am definitely ready to move on and venture on to something else. But right now, I am definitely I can't take it no more. <laughs> now, 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 being that Navajo did give you your uh, give you your chance and all like that, and you're already a year in. Do you think that's enough? For you to uh for you to move on to another company that might give you a chance now since you know how how long has how long has the the felon or the the convention lapsed I should say uh well I'm not sure because every company has different requirements so some companies. They like they would have took me, but I didn't have the experience. Okay. So it's like it's it's kind of you know pros and cons. It's between both. So it's like I got the experience now. Maybe this company might give me the chance because I went somewhere else and got the experience, and you know they might not even look at my background at all. So mm -hmm. all right. I'm hoping that's the next step. All right. Well, that's what's up. You love India, everybody. Man, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I know it's a little I know it's a little late, but again, like I said, I you know, we had to we had to coordinate, you know what I'm saying? We had to coordinate and it's been uh it's been crazy. It's been crazy for me. Uh being that you guys that you guys run a team, is it like ded dedicated team or do you go all across the 48 states? Uh, yeah, it's dedicated. We pretty much, um, we run from Denver all back and forth to Arizona. So oh. it's like a regional account. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, so, so your would you, would it be safe to say that your time with Navajo is coming to an end? You, you feel? I'm sorry, what happened? I say you feel that your time with Navajo is coming to an end? Oh yeah, it is. It okay. definitely is. So what's the so what's the goal for you, India? What what's the goal for you in trucking? Um, the goal is definitely to get out here and be my own boss and um own my <laughs> have my own authority. That way I can move how I want to move and I could run you know how I want to run. All right, that's, so that's what's definitely up. the goal. That's what's up. You got any? Uh, you got any advice for you know females that's that's in your that that well that was in your situation? You got any advice for them? Um, 
Yeah, just don't give up. Whatever it is, like, I mean, when you get lemons, make lemonade. Just don't give up. Whatever it is, don't give up. Because I could have easily gave up and, you know, said, forget it. I'm a convicted felon. I'm not going to never get a job and got back in the streets and started doing, you know, God knows what, just to make a living. So, I don't don't let that hinder you from, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Because it is around things. It is people out there that you use a section. And that whatever you want to don't even got to trust in. It could be a business. It could be going back to school. Um, if you want to go be a lawyer, nurse, all that, it's around there. I know people that are LPNs that have records. Um, people that was locked up with me that have successful businesses. So, you know, don't let your record or your past hinder your future. That's what's up. When you, when you decided to come out here and you told your family, what, what, what did your family say? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a whole, dis- that's a whole different discussion there. Um, to be honest, I'm out here on self-motivation. I'm motivated by myself. I'm out here grinding because I want, you know, I want better for myself. So I don't really have support from my family like that. It's more my friends. Um, my grandmother would probably be the only person that that's, you know, my support system. So um, I really ain't have to answer to nobody or, you know, have to tell nobody what I was out here doing. I just got out here and did it. You know, the black sheep of the family, you right. know, eventually become the goat. So that's, what's that's up. pretty much, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where I stand at with it. So. I don't, I mean, for some reason, I don't know why well, families are like that. It's just not the same. So, uh, Well, that's what's up. That's what's up, India. Thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you ever want to come back on, man, you know, just holler at your boy and I'll, I'll bring you on and we'll chop it up with just about anything you want to chop it up. Thank you for giving me the opportunity for uh, for coming on. You love India, everybody. All right, sorry about that. I had to I had to go black there for a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. Well, India, man. Oh man, man, oh man, oh man. If you was the Check this young lady out on her YouTube page. You love India on uh, on YouTube and you love India on uh, Instagram. You would never have thought that this young lady was a convicted felon. Wow. I mean, when I heard that on Shape World's uh, on Shape World's Instagram live feed, I was I was shocked. I was like, wait. Hold on. She can't possibly be a convicted felon, man. Like, whoa. But anyway, definitely shout out to her. Thank you for coming on, India. I really had a ball. Thank you to you guys for watching and listening. And if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button because that all button lets YouTube knows that you fucking with me. Thank you very much. If you guys like to support the channel, you can do that by hitting, by getting me something to drink. I am finally out of tea, so I can use some more. I'm just saying. Coffee link and the cat and the cash app link is in the description below. I would like to shout out to everybody in the LOM community for being here tonight. I'm about to go. I got to get to driving. I got to go. I really do. I got to go. Two great interviews this evening. You love India and uh, and Janice. Wow, I, I had a I had a great night tonight. So, and I hope you guys did too. So, on that note, we about to get on up out of here. You guys take it easy and uh, stay blessed. All that good stuff, and I'll come back at you guys with another video. Peace. Searching, searching, searching. Searching, searching and searching